Hi, my name is Katherine Skinner, and I'm the Executive Director of Educopia Institute. Today, I'll be sharing with you a brief introduction to a resource that the Educopia Institute and its partner institutions have produced. It's called the ETD Plus Toolkit. The ETD Plus Toolkit is the result of a project that's funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Educopia Institute led the creation of the toolkit in partnership with the Networked Digital Library of Theses and Dissertations, ProQuest, and 12 U.S. research libraries. Its purpose is to train students to manage their research outputs, including data, software code, audiovisual files, digital text, digital art, visualizations, and GIS data sets. Our project team surveyed nearly 800 students and more than 30 faculty and staff members on eight university campuses in 2014 in order to better understand the gaps between what students are producing and what students are submitting in their research processes. We also sought to better understand what students know and what they need to know about long-term file management practices that can help them ensure that their research files remain usable later in their careers. We found that students believe that their non-PDF files, including research data, video, digital art, and software code, are either as important or more important than those that they submit as PDFs to satisfy their degree requirements. We also found that 80% of these student respondents plan to produce non-text files in their research, including such forms as tabular data and software code. Based on our findings, we designed this toolkit to help the academic community to train students to ensure the longevity and accessibility of their research outputs. The toolkit provides real-time advice to students that will help students make sure that their research outputs are stored and maintained in durable formats and on durable devices, and will also help students to make informed decisions about file formats, documentation, and rights. So what is the toolkit? It's an open set of six modules and evaluation instruments that prepare students to create, store, and maintain their research outputs. Each is designed to stand alone. They may also be used as a series. As you can see here, the modules cover a wide range of practices. These modules are introductory in nature. They present a concise set of information that can be covered by a one-hour workshop and then they also provide a lot of jumping off points to deeper materials and resources that students may consult following that workshop. Broadly speaking, the modules cover the following topics, copyright and rights management, data organization principles, file format management, metadata creation, storage of digital content, and version control. Each module in the set includes five common elements. Each includes a learning objective uh, handout, a one-page handout, a four to six page customizable guidance brief, a slideshow with extensive presenter notes, and pre-workshop and post-workshop evaluation surveys. Anyone may use the toolkit. This resource is openly available for adoption and adaptation by anyone who wants to use it. We especially recommend its use by administrators, faculty, and librarians who are teaching students, and then also by students who are seeking practical advice about digital content management. You can get started by going to the URL you see here, educopia.org slash publications slash ETD plus toolkit, all one word. So let's go there now. On this page, you'll find more information about the project, including the names of all the project team authors who participated in the creation of this resource. You'll also find the access points prompt and a live link to the ETD Plus toolkit toward the top center of the page. By clicking that link, you will access a Google Drive location in which seven folders reside. The first folder is about the toolkit. The other six folders correspond to the six modules we discussed earlier. So let's enter the About the Toolkit link now. After you click on the About the Toolkit folder, you will see three files, 
one PDF, and two slideshows. The PDF is an ETD at a glance overview. This is a brief publication that provides roughly the same information that's contained in this webinar. The two slideshows are important overview com components. The first is an overview that's targeting administrators. This is a terrific resource for trainers to deliver to administrator audiences, including graduate school, library, and faculty representatives. The administrator overview offers context for the ETD Plus Toolkit's creation, including information about the project's research findings and how we translated those into the ETD Plus Toolkit of training materials. It also includes details on how and where the six modules may be used. The second slideshow is an overview designed for students. If you plan to teach all six modules as a series, this is a great preliminary overview of the reasons why files need structure and care in order to survive and in order to be useful in the future. It is also a great overview of this workshop series and what students may expect to learn from each module as a whole package. Now let's navigate back to the main Google Drive folder that we accessed from the ETD Plus Toolkit webpage. Here you again see the About the Toolkit uh, folder and then also the six modules. Each of these modules contains the same standard elements as we discussed earlier. So now let's dive into the first of these modules to see what that looks like. We'll enter module one, copyright. As you enter this folder, you'll see five files, and we'll take these in order of appearance. The first is a guidance brief, a four to six page document that provides a general overview of the topic of the module. So in this case, copyright. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now we're looking at the first page of that document. As you'll see, this is a text-based document. It provides a brief scenario at the top of the page, then breaks into several sections, including an overview of why this topic area matters, basic advice on how to do it, a section on the tools that are available to help, a section on local practices at your university, a resources section, and then finally an activities section with concrete workshop activities that any trainer can host. Now let's scan a few, page down, a few pages down in this guidance brief and go to the local practices section. You'll see this local practices section is highlighted in yellow. This is the one section in each guidance brief that will need to be updated by the trainer before either mounting it on a website or producing it as a handout or an attachment for trainees. This section is, spe is specifically about local resources. Where a trainer isn't sure about local resources or where a trainer is addressing an audience from multiple institutional settings, this section may simply be deleted. Now, moving on to the second file in the Google folder, you see here a one-page printable handout that contains all the highlights of the workshop module. These are great for handing out to trainees. The third document in the folder is the set of learning objectives for the module, those competencies a trainee should expect to gain by attending and participating in the workshop. Fourth, you'll find a full slide deck and extensive talking points embedded in the notes field for each slide. These make it easy for trainers of a variety of backgrounds to pick up this workshop and deliver it with only modest preparation. Note that the page I've chosen to show on this slide is the one slide in each deck that will require trainer attention and modification. There's a space here where the instructor can put his or her name personalizing the deck. Finally, the fifth document in the folder is a set of two student surveys, one that can be delivered as a pre-workshop survey and the other as a post-workshop survey. In both cases, all of the text and answers and logic are documented for the instructor. It should only take a trainer a few minutes to use these to populate a SurveyMonkey or Google Survey in instrument so that they can offer these to their students. That, in a nutshell, is the set of resources that we have created for the ETD Plus Toolkit. Returning to the website now, you'll see that just below the link to the toolkit, which took us into the Google Drive folder we've been exploring, there is also another link, this time to an ETD Plus survey. This survey is for trainers who give this workshop in their local settings. The responses given to this three-minute survey will help us greatly in demonstrating the reach of the curriculum to our funder. 
They will also help us to refine the workshop based on feedback from trainers. We would greatly appreciate any and all feedback, both from trainers who use the curriculum and for those who simply review or use this set of materials in other ways. I hope this has provided a helpful introduction. Please feel free to contact me at katherine at educopia.org with any questions or comments or feedback that you may have.